So I haven't done a proper overview of this computer yet, and so I guess I'll just do that right now since I have nothing else to do. I got this computer at the a thrift store for about 10 bucks. It was labeled as $50 until I went and asked someone, I was like, dude, this is kind of ridiculous. This thing's so old it can't even connect to the internet and you want $50 for it? And they're like, oh, that's not how it's supposed to be. And they went over there and marked it for 10 along with the monitor that it came with. So obviously I just went over there and bought it right away. Anyway, this is a Pentium 75. Pentiums are weird computers. They have all sorts of different models of CPUs ranging from 60 to like 233 or just 200 if you're not counting the MMX units. Well, it's really weird because there's like so many different little clock speed increases and changes. There's like the 60 and then there's the 66 and there's the 75, 100, 120, 133, 166, 150, just everything in between. And the 75 and some 100s are really weird because they have a bus speed of 50 while the others are 60 or 66, so this kind of, has, kind of has a disadvantage. I wonder how it compares to a um, 66 or 60 megahertz Pentium. Taking the case off on this is rather irritating since you have to take the front of the case off first before you take off the top, because there's two little metal clips on the top that prevent you from taking off the metal casing or putting it back on without taking the front off first. Luckily it's held on there with some um, metal clips, so it's less li likely to break than cheesy old plastic clips. So inside we obviously have our CPU. This Pentium 75 is in a ceramic package. The original Pentium 60 and 66 MHz CPUs had a heat spreader on them. That's because they ran at a higher voltage. The Pentium 75 and 100 lowered the voltage, the operational voltage, to run cooler. Compared to all the other Pentiums, the 60 and 66 ran really hot. I wanted to run this computer with its original configuration, so I put that Sound Blaster's AWE64 into my 486, so now I'm running the original sound card in this computer. This is an ESS Audio Drive 1688. I haven't seen it very often online, and it has an IDE header, and also a wavetable. It's one of my only non-PNP cards. And also, if you're going to work with this hardware, prepare to get injuries, because I just cut myself. Damn sharp metal anyway. Up on the top we have a hard drive that's kind of a pain to get out. It's a Quantum Trailblazer 860 megabytes, I think. It's actually kind of easier to get out than most hard drives and cases. It has a little tab here to keep it in. Behind the hard drive and its mess of cables, here we have 32 megabytes of EDO RAM, which is super fast and super lots. You know, there's 32 megabytes, it's more than your 8 gigabytes. And also there's all your controllers and stuff, like serial and parallel and all that mess. To the right of all those IDE controllers and stuff like that, here's the L2 cache, which is 256k of asynchronous RAM. Or asynchronous cache, whatever you want to call it. And also down there is the, there is the coast module. I'm not going to get one. It's kind of expensive and hard to find, and I don't really care to find one. I'll just stick with my other cache, thanks. Holy crap, this thing has an actual button battery in here that I can change. And that little Dallas RTC above it. That means I don't have to go and modding this thing when it dies like most of those other stupid Dallas clock chip pieces of crap. So here's that Super VGA monitor that I got with the computer. I got for $2, so the whole setup itself was 12 bucks. Not bad, considering that these monitors are starting to become hard to find, and also their tubes are starting to get worn out and stuff. This one has good color. It's nice and bright and everything. And also I have to use a sock on one of the corners of my computer so it doesn't scratch up my desk. It's missing a foot. I need to find another one. Another cool thing that I got with this computer is a cable that plugs into the back of the power supply and into the monitor so that you could have one plug into the wall to power the whole setup. That's really nice. So while I'm playing with the sad macro mode on my camera, let's turn this thing on anyway. So first of all, let's give it the obligatory Pentium test. Can it play quick? And the answer to that is no and yes. It's kind of on the slow side for a Pentium. There's a lot faster Pentiums out there to play Quake on, but I guess it works if this is your only computer to play it on. I guess you can make the window size smaller to make it run faster, but I probably wouldn't play Quake on here. I'd get my faster Pentium MX 200 megahertz computer to do that. Or heck, even a Pentium 3 if I really wanted to go overkill. 
Quake has never really been my thing, though. I find it kind of boring compared to other first-person shooters at the time. At least it's a pretty good leap in graphics technology to benchmark your old computers in if you want to. Now it's time for something much more entertaining, and that's Duke Nukem 3D. This is one of my favorite first-person shooters from the DOS era. It's got humor and violence and all that kind of stuff. Even though it doesn't feature fully polygonal enemies and stuff like that, it's, it's, a, it's, it's just a blast to play. There's no, there's no other way to put it. So you can probably notice on the Pentium 75, there are load times that aren't usually there if you play on something that's a little bit faster, like a Pentium 133. Although with the window size down a little bit, it runs really good actually. Well, there's still some slowdown here and there when things get really hectic, but otherwise it's really playable at the minimum resolution settings at least. Here's another pretty good benchmark that I've figured out over playing Tyrion 2K. This is the last level of the first episode, which has scrolling backgrounds, warping backgrounds, the light mechanic, everything that can possibly go wrong. It really pushes the computer on the Pentium settings. Even on the Pentium 75, you have to turn it down to at least normal to get a smooth gameplay experience out of this level. And that's a Pentium graphics mode, so this Pentium should be able to handle it. Why is it not? But, oh well, there's faster computers to play it on if you want to play it at that um, graphic level all the time. I'm alright with higher Pentium. This, game, this computer will at least run Pentium on most levels, except for the last few, when they really get hectic. The ESS Audio Drive 1688 car that this computer contains is kind of interesting. It's Sound Blaster 16 compatible, and it has a very distinct sound from the Sound Blaster 16. And in some cases, I actually like it more than the Sound Blaster 16, so let's compare a couple songs with the two audio cards to see which one's better. Well, you can have your own opinion if you want, I don't care.
You should let me know in the comments what you think sounds better, the ESS Audio Drive 1688 or the Sound Blaster 16. It's always fun comparing old sound cards since they sound so drastically different from each other, even though they do the same thing in the end of the day. They all try to run the same files, same sound, same everything, but they always have different outcomes. The only thing that I've had an issue with with the um, 1688 uh, ESS audio drive is that sometimes there's some missing note or missing instrument in some songs. Like, there's one song in SimCity 2000 that does this. And speaking of SimCity 2000, um, the Pentium 75 is really good with it. It's like one of the first CPUs I'd say makes this game run really smooth. S the 486DX266 MHz almost cuts it, but not quite. So in all, this is a pretty cool machine to mess around with, especially for $10. And the Pentium 75 is kind of unique compared to all the other Pentiums, since it's one of the two CPUs that ran in the 50 MHz bus speed compared to the 60 or 66 MHz bus speed. And also, this and the Pentium 100 are the first P54C processors, which is a revision of the P5 microarchitecture. So it's one of the first of the better models of Pentium. For people looking to get into sort of um, older computers, this probably wouldn't be the one since it's kind of on the slower side of the side of the Pentium. If you want to run Windows, I'd recommend something a little bit faster, like the 133 or above. But if you don't want to run all the fancy high-end Windows stuff and all that, this thing is kind of good for DOS 6.22, Windows 3.11, and or like just using Windows 95 as a DOS launcher, basically. Anything less demanding than Quake is pretty much set on a computer like this.